Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a thing of beauty. The Letterman Free T4. And I must warn you, in this review I might say a few things that you, as a potential Letterman fan, won't like. Curious? Watch the video. Welcome to the review of the Letterman Free T4. But before I start with the review, I would like to tell you something. Um, if you're not tuned into my channel before, you might not know that I'm a 100% independent reviewer. I'm not being paid by manufacturers for my reviews and I don't have any affiliate deals. I also don't have any advertisements on my website and the products that I review are being sent back after reviewing. Um, if you want to support me in my way of reviewing, please, 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 please hit the subscribe button. And now on to the review of the Letterman Free T4. Like I said in my introduction already, it is a thing of beauty. So let's spend a few seconds just looking at it. Now I think we can all agree on this, it is a thing of beauty, but is it any good? Now before I go on to all the small details, first let me get into a different position because otherwise I will have a cramp in my back at the end of this video. So now let's get it and now you can see immediately that there's a little metal thingy in here and um, that's how I keep this upright because otherwise of course it falls. Um, now let's fold it back into its shape. Um, the Letterman Free T4. Well, you might expect me to do a review outside like I normally do, but this time I'm doing it in my shed because it's beautiful weather outside, but it is really freezing cold and I don't think my batteries will last for an hour. Um, and this is going to be a take a little bit more. And also because, as I just showed you, I want to go into a little bit more uh, detail than I did in the past with some new stuff that I bought. Um, so I hope you like this more into detail stuff and that you don't mind me being not outside. But of course, I have been testing um, the Letterman Free T4 outdoors for the last couple of months. And that's how I came up with a lot of experience by now. The Letterman Free T4, it's a very different Letterman than the ones that I know. Let's say the multi-tools. Um, this is not a multi-tool. This is more like a Swiss army knife. The size, it is 93 uh, millimeters in length, it is 70 millimeters in width, and it is 22 millimeters in height. And the weight, it is 122 grams. Letterman does one very special thing with the T4, the T2, and there are also two other uh, multi-tools available in the free range. And um, with the free, Letterman makes a tool with magnets. And um, there's one magnet here and there's one magnet on the other side. And why is it in here? Because most pocket knives, they operate with a spring. When you open the knife, and I'll demonstrate this, there is this moment that it flicks and it blocks. But if you put it back again, and now I have to do it like this, um, there is this movement that you feel that little last part. That is by, with most tools, it is done with a spring, a metal spring. Now, Letterman um, thinks that spring-loaded tools are vulnerable because the springs, they might break. So that's why they put magnets inside the Letterman uh, free range. And that is really a, well, clever thought. But there is more to the magnets than um, is visible on the surface. And I will get back to this later. Now, first, let me talk you through all uh, the tools that the T4 has. The most important tool of every knife is, of course, the knife itself. And um, the T4 is designed for a one-hand operation. And on every tool on the back, there is a little metal knob that's connected, of course, to, or that's an integral part of uh, the tool itself. Now, if I flip the knob, and I'll try to demonstrate it in this way, then you will see that Okay, the knife stays in the casing, but the other two tools get out of it. Now, then I'll have to flip it, then I'll do it with the other hand, because if it doesn't work with the knob, 
um, there is this little slit in the knife uh, itself. So with one hand I can open it, putting my thumb into the slit and with my other finger, well, basically helping. Do I feel safe? No, not really. Um, some knives they've got a little knob on the blade itself so that you can really use it uh, to open the blade. Um, this one doesn't have it. I don't think this is a really convenient single hand operation. Um, in my month of usage, um, I basically use two hands to open the blade itself. I feel more secure just doing it in this way. The knife blade is 60 millimeters in length and I measured the cutting edge at 55 millimeters. Uh, and as you can see, it is a drop point blade. Um, it is made out of a 420 high carbon stainless steel. And 420 high carbon says something about the mixture, the chemical mix that the manufacturer, the steel manufacturer uses to compose basically um, a blade. And 420, uh, it's quite a mix that we see in a lot of knives. What is also important, that's the hardness of the blade itself. And hardness is important because how harder uh, a blade is, the more sharp it will stay over a longer period of time. This hardness, it is measured in Rockwell. And uh, it's just like degrees or Fahrenheit. It's something that we all agree on. Rockwell is the measurement for hardness of metals. Um, the blade of the T4 has a hardness of 57 HRC Rockwell. And 57 is quite a nice general mix uh, between sharpness, retaining sharpness, and also toughness. So it won't break that easy because if you have a very high Rockwell number, uh, the material is also very brittle. And then if you apply some force with a knife, it might break. Well, in this case, that's of course not. The 57 is a nice general mixture uh, for a pocket knife like the T4. Now, there's one thing that I also would like to tell you something about, and that's the the shape of the blade itself um, and might be difficult to see but if you look at the um, shine then you can see that it is not a v-shaped blade and now i'll have to use my hands um, a v-shape that's of course this and a lot of cheaper pocket knives have got a v-shaped blade but this one it is a concave blade or a hollow one and it looks more like this like the bow of a ship um, and the big advantage of a concave um, blade is that it is a little bit thinner near the edge. So it got less resistance if you cut through wood, paper, wires, that kind of things. Um, if you have a V-shaped blade, it gives just a little bit more resistance. Um, and well, that's something you don't want. We want to cut through our oranges with great ease and then a concave blade is definitely better. Um, in the time that I've been testing uh, the T4, I had to sharpen it once. Uh, and it's just an easy process. I use a small whetstone for this. Um, and I've been cutting a lot of stuff. I've been um, sharpening sticks with making points on them just to uh, have a sort of a spear. Um, I've been using it on um, branches, blocks of wood to make sort of fire starter to get all those little notches in there. There's one thing that I should say about the blade or about the, basically the grip itself of uh, the whole T4. Um, the edges, they are quite sharp if you need to put a lot of pressure on the knife itself. And um, also because of the clip, if you wrap your hand around it and you hold it really tight, well, the clip, it's not that comfortable. Um, it's very convenient if you put the knife inside your pocket, but maybe um, if this was my knife i would maybe take the clip away uh, and just keep it in my pocket in, a, in another way uh, or in a special pouch uh, just to get it more comfortable um, then there's one other thing that well basically surprised me a little bit that is that the surface of the plastic on top of here um, when you use a knife, knife like this i always like to use a knife like this with my thumb on top of this i really like to see some uh, structure on this because especially when it's a little bit wettish um, this is uh, sort of a little bit slippery and I like to see a little bit of more grip there. Now to get the knife back into its casing again that's pretty easy. Um, I always do this with two hands it's again not in my opinion a second hand operation 
Um, the blocking mechanism is, is, by the way, very, very good. It, there's hardly any movement uh, when the knife is locked. Uh, just flip this one like so, and then flip it back again. And then you can do it with, well, basically one hand. Now open it with two hands, and this is a really one hand operation. That is possible. Now let's continue with the other tools. One of the other important things on a pocket knife is of course the scissors and again here the knobs to open the scissor and well it's a very small knob uh, but normally you open all three of them in one and then you take out the scissor itself now um, the funny thing now again is that Leatherman basically contradicts itself because the scissor it is spring-loaded you can see it underneath here and it makes that the scissor opens itself again now let's turn it the other way around. What I do like about the scissors is that there is a structure on top of it. So if you use this, your thumb doesn't slip away. Um, I've prepared some cutting material for the scissors. Let me get this. Because the scissors, it's a very um, decent one. Um, let's do paper. This is two layers of my old script. Well. No problem whatsoever for the scissor. Let's fold it again. Four layers of paper. Well, it still goes through this quite decent. Uh, let's put that aside. Let's take some cardboard. And as well, you can see it cuts through cardboard like it's butter. And this is like really nice cardboard. The other thing that I like to use a uh, pair of scissors on is basically on um, tie wraps. Well, not a problem. A thick one not a problem as well now then one big thing that um, well it's most of the time a really big thing for scissors is um, paracord and also paracord well it goes pretty easy let's do it again so in this respect the scissors are fine Except for one thing, and since it is a pocket knife, I use the scissors also to cut my nails. And I've been saving my nails for this shot, basically. And I will demonstrate that basically the scissors, yes, they do cut the nails. But the scissors itself, it's quite a thick material. Um, and they don't get really close to the edge of the nails. So for nail clipping, um, that's not the best. I like the ones, to be honest, from Victorinox a little bit better. But that's enough on the scissors. And this is the magical video. All of a sudden I've got a tree and a belt lying here. Because we are going to talk about the owl. And I hope I pronounce it correctly. And you hear the dogs of the neighbors probably. Uh, the owl on the tool. Um, again, the knob. I'm not going to say this again. The owl itself, it's got two functions. First of all, it's an owl and it is also a very tiny screwdriver. The tiny screwdriver, well, I've been using it on my glasses and it really works very well because it is small and sharpish. Um, I won't tie it any further because then my glasses will break. So the little screwdriver, that's a very good thing. But the all itself, I don't like it in the first place because it's also a screwdriver. It's not that pointy. And if you use it on a belt, for example, that's where you make holes in, for example, um, if you use it on a belt, well, it's more like damaging basically the, the structure of the material. It will go through in the end, but you don't get a really nice round hole. It's more like um, it's cutting the material itself. Uh, if you use it on, for example, a piece of wood, a tree to get a screw in, well, this, it works sort of, but still, it's getting a very big hole in there. Um, and to be honest, and maybe I should compare this with um, a hole that I actually like, and I've got it here. Um, this is probably my oldest pocket knife. Um, where is the old? This one, if you compare the two, well, you can see the difference well, quite easy. The left one, that is an old, sharp and pointy, and that will make a nice hole, while the other one more cuts. Let's continue with tool number four, the Phillips screwdriver and bottle opener. That's why I changed the scenery again. Um, and this is the one. Now, let's start with the screwdriver. Um, this one ranges from a 0.6 pH to a pH 3. Um, pH stands for Phillips. Now, the 06, I don't have that one, but this is a bit size pH 1. And you use that one for 
really tiny screws. Well, let me demonstrate. This works nicely. It fits like a glove. And I've been using it all to make a small hole for the bigger screws. But you see, this works. Now, the um, PH2, which is this one, which basically fits onto well, quite a lot of screws. The PH2 is a very common one. Um, let me use a little bit bigger one. You know, this is a nice fit as well, but on the T4, it is a very nice fit too. And again, it goes into the beam quite nicely. Now, and what is quite special, let me put that one over there again, is that the uh, PH3, which is way less common, um, it's a stump one, um, it fits into really big screws and it also fits on the screwdriver of the Leatherman. And now I have to apply a little bit more force, but you get the idea. In this respect, um, the Phillips screwdriver is really a broad range screwdriver and I like it. I've used it at home in my kitchen um, for the cupboards um, to repair them. Now, after I've done with my DIY stuff, I like to drink a beer. This is an alcohol-free one from Germany, I believe, and the bottle opener. It works quite nicely too. On to tool number five, which is the, well, and that's a difficult one. Let's open it again. It is the um, screwdriver, a flat one, and a pry tool and packaging opener. Well, um, I've been using this one in my shed quite a lot of times. Um, to pry uh, paint tin uh, cans open. Um, that works really well. It works also as a screwdriver. I cannot show you this because I'm mostly using this on my photography equipment, which is not available at the moment, as you might understand. Um, but, the pry, but the packaging opener, that's really a sort of a special one. And that's why I have the box behind me. Now, opening a package is always like, um, well, basically a sort of surprise. But if you do this with a normal knife, then you might damage what's inside it. Um, and on the packaging opener, there is a sort of sharpies edge. It's not really cutting sharp, but it's sharp enough to open boxes and um, the wraps around them. And this one just came out of China. Um, and there's a lot of paper in between, but let me demonstrate. One, let me get it into the opening there. And well, I have to figure, there it is. And now I have to turn to my left hand, which is not my best, my left hand. And there is a lot of plastic. Um, I like so it opens and well, I know what's inside, that's for a later review. Get this one out of the way again. So the package opener is really made for me and I like it. On to the next tool and that is the tweezers and it is incorporated into the handle. Um, it's a construction that we see on a lot of pocket knives and oh, the tweezers they basically look the same as uh, most tweezers. Um, they are pretty nice if you've got a splinter and you want to take it out it works but I also like to use it if I have for example my fishing stuff and I have these really well, you can't see this probably uh, really tiny hooks uh, and you need to get a fishing wire around it and I always use a pair of tweezers just to get the loop and the last bit done before I tie up the whole um, fishing hook onto the line itself. So I think tweezers are always very convenient to have in a pocket knife and this is a very decent one. And now I'm getting to the last tool of the T4 and like many others also this is a combination tool. Uh, on top you can see it is a normal screwdriver and that one works fine. And then on the side that you're seeing now it is a wood file because the diagonal stripes are going in one way and on the other side they're going two ways so this is the metal file. And now I'm getting back to what I said earlier right in the beginning on the magnetic part of the Leatherman 3T4. Um, and now I have to reverse a little bit in time because just when I got this Leatherman for reviewing um, I was making a campfire um, and I dropped the knife accidentally. 
it was in the sand when I picked it up. It was really loaded with all small particles. I cleaned it with a cloth and later that night I had to sharpen a skewer of metal. And what I noticed is that a lot of those metal parts that I grinded off the skewer were sticking to the file itself. I didn't think anything of it. Uh, I left, went home and the next day I looked at the Leatherman and I saw there were a lot of metal parts sticking still to the Leatherman. And then I thought, ah, of course, this is because of the magnetic stuff. Later, I went into my shed to do some filing on my knife that I'm working on. Um, and I tried the file itself as well on that one. And the file, yes, it's a small one, but it works quite well if you want to do some metal filing on wood. It's a little bit less, but I hardly ever use a file on wood um, in the outdoors. But after this, I also noticed that a lot of metal parts were sticking to the Leatherman. And it was also into the smallest corners. So I had to use compressed air to clean the Leatherman again. And to be honest, I think that a magnetic pocket knife or a multi-tool is really not that clever just because of this. Yes, I know other tools, um, they use a little bit of lubrication um, and you get stuff sticking to the lubrication as well, but it doesn't attract metal parts. This one attracts metal parts. And in this regard, I think this is really stupid. And now I'm actually forgetting two things on the file itself. And the first one is, it is quite a useful tool for your nails. And the other one is in combination with a fire steel, because this works really well. Now let's not burn my shed. On to my verdict. How do I rate the Leatherman 3 T4? Well, it is a sort of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of verdict. Um, I do like the way how the designers thought about using magnets on keeping the tools inside the casing. It's a very clever way of thinking and a very new way of thinking. I do like the way how the Leatherman is constructed. It is very solid built and the locking mechanism is really of a very good quality. Um, what I don't really like is the fact that because of the magnets they promise you a one hand opening experience well i'm sorry that's just not the case yes you can use it with one hand but you open most of the time more tools than you really need most of the tools are very very practical and i do like the scissors for a lot of things except for cutting my nails and since it is a pocket knife i expect it to you to work as a nail cutter as well and that's a little bit of a bummer the other tool that I think could be better is the awl because it is just not pointy enough and it rather cuts than that it punctures. Um, the knife, it is really well built. It is sharp and it cuts through a lot of different materials like a warm knife through butter. So that is a pro. But the biggest thing is basically the magnets again. I don't like the fact that they are placed in a tool that I need on a daily basis because the magnets, they attract a lot of dirt. Um, and also that you have to bear in mind is the price. The Leatherman 3 T4 retails for 79 euros and 95 cents or 59 dollars and 95 cents. And that is, I think, quite expensive for a tool that is basically one big dirt collector and therefore I rate the Leatherman 3 T4 at 7.3 points out of 10 total. I hope you liked the review and that it was useful to you and if it was please leave a comment below and give the video a like and like I said in the beginning of the video I am a 100% independent reviewer so if you want to support me please subscribe to my YouTube channel Follow me on Instagram and like my Facebook page. And if you do, many, 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 many thanks in advance. Enjoy the outdoors. Cheers. It's a wrap.